It's Craig uh, from Rock Mornings, 94.9 The Rock, hanging out with John Angus and Colin from The Trues. How you doing, guys? Pretty good, man. Yeah, this dude. Is, uh, thanks for having us. Well, thanks for doing this. Uh, I was just uh, talking to a couple of people before we started this about you guys and COVID and this year and how The Trues are one of the bands that has really found ways to adapt and keep moving forward, you know, between the uh, theater shows, the drive-in theater shows, and now this live from inside the Danforth Music Hall tomorrow night. Good on you, because I guess a lot of bands have just said, oh, screw it, we'll, we'll wait till we can get back to the, the real deal. But you guys have uh, soldiered on. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think I think it was just our way of kind of coping with the whole thing, you know, just to keep working. And we, we're kind of like that even when it's not a global pandemic, you know, we're just always trying to figure out ways to move forward. It's just been, you know, 100 times more challenging this year. So uh, we try to do as much as we can, given the circumstances. And uh, we're having fun with it. You know, it definitely doesn't, be being out there playing for for people in, in mm. clubs and stuff but um you know it is what it is there's that great photo uh and i think it's from the danforth music hall the last time you played there when all the sparkles and stuff were coming down and i guess it was the end of the show and the, the shot is from behind you guys and and so you get the whole audience view it's yeah. gonna be a different view for you guys tomorrow night from, a, from the last time you were there, for sure. Yeah, it's um, that shot was taken by Dave Bastido, who's going to be there again tomorrow, and we're hoping to maybe recreate it. Um, mm. All you'll see is a few cameras, uh, but you know, it's it's to your point uh, to what Colin was just saying as well. It's like uh, we don't sit still very well, so we're, we're trying to find ways to 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 keep active and, and also keep connected with our, our fans. It's been a good therapy on both ends, I think, you know, to, to be able to reach out and connect with uh, the folks that follow us and definitely been good for us. And from what we hear, it's been good for them. Uh, but yeah, definitely nothing, uh, you know, whether it be the drive-ins or these uh, live streams, they don't, they don't quite, uh, they don't quite fill the void, but it's like, it's a good placeholder. Yeah, I would guess it when you're performing live, uh, you know, a good night or a bad night, you know, a lot of times depends on the reaction you're getting from the crowd. So tomorrow night, is this the first time you're going to have done this inside of a theater with nobody there? Outside yeah. of maybe from, from when you first started your career and nobody yeah. quite like, knew who you guys were yet? Yeah, yeah. 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 It's like, it's kind of funny because like when we, when we, there was definitely gigs where we played to absolutely no one early on. They just tended to be really small divey bars. Like right. we, didn't, we didn't typically have like a full production and all the stuff and guitar techs and sound guys and monitor guys and played for absolutely no one in a big hall. And then, you know, so it's kind of a, the, the weird thing for us would be probably be like, it just feels like a real deal rock show with absolutely no one there. You know, like yeah. if it wasn't COVID, it would just be a, a disaster, <laughs> a disaster <laughs> situation. <laughs> no, we're, at, we're at the damn part. We didn't sell a single ticket. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it's like the old uh, was it Robbie Robertson told a great story of when the band first started and they yeah. played some huge bar. And the roof yeah. was all blowing out, and he says there was only four people in the joint, and a fight broke out. <laughs> nice. Love it. That's, yeah. that's as good as it gets, man. I love that story. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's terrific. Now, how do you think moving forward as we get into next year and hopefully vaccines are, are here and people are able to get back to the land of the living, how, uh, how odd will it be? And do you think people will feel a little uh, timid about coming out to shows at first? you think it's going to take a while for people to warm up being crowded into a theater again? Yeah, I mean... I think on a number of fronts, like the, the psychological fallout from this year will be felt long after it's over. And um, so it'll, it remains to be seen. I mean, hopefully, you know, maybe the first month that things open up, people might be weird. And then hopefully we'll gradually kind of get back to feeling safe about being around one another and, and, and feeling good about being out in crowds. And, and then hopefully we can get back to a, a new, new normal where we're going to talk about, man, we better remember that pandemic that was crazy we've got to make sure we don't let that stuff happen again and, and then hopefully we can just be a bit more conscious of everything and and and, and go forth and and keep making music and having shows and people coming I think, in i think as far as our career goes as far as like playing live i think that what's going to happen in the summer is i think people are going to be comfortable with with outdoor shows like i think that's what we're sort of planning for anyway that, that the first thing to open up will be playing outdoors i think the last thing to open up will be like shoulder to shoulder concerts and even sports like I, I don't think that's that's not going to be like imminent but probably within a year but you know I think we're we're kind of planning for the fact that people will be comfortable playing you know being outdoors in a field whether we're still distancing or not will depend on 
a lot of factors, but I think that's the sort of stage one is to, to play for people outside. Yeah, it seems to me that we, uh, we have uh, short memories and I, I tend to think that in no time we'll all just be back to living like the, the pigs we've always been. You know, you think about the way you lived your life prior to this. You know, we, we talk about this on the, on the air where you'd, you'd go downtown for a show or uh, uh, whatever the event is, and you're riding the TTC, and you're grabbing the railings, and you're grabbing a beer when you get there, and you're eating pizza, and you're going to the washroom, and you're never washing your hands. You're not, you know, you just, I can't, I can't imagine going back and living like that again. Yeah, and yeah, we probably shouldn't have been, we probably should be a bit more conscientious to begin with, and I, I think this is a, the, the mighty reminder of that. So, uh, yeah, for okay. sure. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll be washing our hands a lot more. Maybe not shaking hands as much. And, hmm. uh, who knows? Yeah. <laughs> no, actually, that could probably all go away. Just a nod, a curtsy, just curtsy to everybody from now. I'll be on. bowing. I'll be bowing. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's funny. I was when I was uh, thinking back to the amount of times I've seen you guys, and I've been to a, just a ton of your shows. And I think the first time was in a very crowded theater at the Phoenix, like 15 years ago, when you opened for the Stones. Oh, and I'm yeah, sure you. Show. I was at that show. Yeah, and and. Uh, and uh, probably the first time I saw you and really kind of the first time that I was introduced to your music and have become, uh, from that day, a huge fan of you guys. Uh, and I'm sure you're asked this question all the time, but between opening up for them and Robert Plant, back, and I guess that was the year after, those crazy times for uh, young guys in the trues meeting those guys. Yeah, I know, it was like, it, the Stones was in August and, and in September we were on tour across Canada with Robert Plant, it was like right back to back. So it was like, yeah. it went, yeah, it was like, overload you know and incredible i'm certainly grateful for it and, but uh everything was happening really really quickly especially in that period when our second record came out because uh because we had the first record that was a success and then the second one was a success and just a lot of buzz around the band and all this stuff coming at you and you know now that i look when i look back on it i'm like wow that was what an incredible thing what, what an incredible luck and i was really grateful for the opportunity but uh yeah it was like you know, we got a call the day before the Stones did their little show in the Phoenix. And I, I if you don't, I don't know if you recall, but Charlie Watts had just gotten over a health scare with cancer. Right. And there was a really good chance that show wasn't going to happen. They're like, if Charlie's not feeling up to it, they're not going to, it's not going to happen. But if it's happening, you guys can open. We're like, holy crap. So it was like 24 hours of finding out we're opening for the Stones, but we might not be opening for the Stones. And then until we get there and until the day of the show, we won't know if it's going to happen. And then sure enough, we got to the Phoenix and then the stones arrived and did sound check and like, okay, the show's going to happen. And, and I think the next day we're like, okay, and now you're going to go on tour with Robert Plant across Canada. Like, okay, that sounds totally normal to us. Now we just played with the stones, the Phoenix. Now it's time to go out with the Led Zeppelin guy. You know? <laughs> I guess yeah. this, I guess this is the new normal, you know? Yeah, no, great story. It must've been some great stories from the road. I remember someone saying, uh, to me once that they had gone backstage for a meet and greet with the stones or something and at some show and you know the handlers come in first and they kind of read everybody the rules you know don't approach let them approach don't you know all these things don't touch don't go near and so everybody's kind of on guard how how should we react and then once keith walks in he was just hugging and grabbing everybody anyhow so yeah. no rules when it comes to mr richards that thing. was sort of our experience with him as well he was the friendliest most approachable and i recall at sound check we were at the Phoenix and it was like, you know, 2005. So I guess smoking indoors, it was definitely not allowed anymore, but it was like recently made illegal, like in the previous five years or whatever. But uh, he was lighting up cigarettes and just chain smoking darts, the whole sound check. And I, I saw two security guys going back and forth going, uh, are you going to tell him? Should I tell him? No, we're not going to tell him. It's no. Keith Richards. So he can smoke. He's fine. You know? He can do as he pleases. That's right. Yeah. Uh, so now I was uh, also looking at your Facebook page and uh, something you guys are doing tomorrow night at the Danforth Music Hall for Live From Inside is you've had people sending you videos applauding. Yeah. Has that been, has, how's that going to work out? I think that's going to be a great little touch. It's kind of like Conan O'Brien has all the cardboard cutouts of his... Uh, yeah, yeah. We had to get... Uh, well, we needed it. I talked to the video director and he said in order for it to work, he would need it all in advance so he could cut it together and insert it sort of as he saw fit. So I think the plan is just to make one moment out of it uh, where the folks at home can can applaud and they'll see themselves uh, if they're watching. So that's the that's the plan for that. That's great. And the thing with seeing you guys, uh, and I'm, I'm looking so forward to the show tomorrow night, as I said, I've seen you a bunch of times, but every time is different. Every show is unique. You guys always put a lot of effort into not just going out there and 
playing the hits and leaving the stage. So uh, we would expect to see some some new stuff tomorrow night. Uh, what's yeah, going on? We're debuting a brand new song. Um, we just finished a record uh, that we actually started in this time last year in Nashville uh, with Rich Robinson from the Black Crows. He produced three songs. And um, we were supposed to get together with him in March and go to Nashville, but, you know, pandemic. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we, pe we, we finally pieced together the full record using a couple different producers. And uh, we're going to debut a, one of our favorites from that record at the Danforth. And um, yeah, there's going to be some kind of, we're going to do a couple of songs with really broken down instruments. I don't want to spoil any surprises, but uh, we're, we're, we're definitely making use of the space. Yeah, the one advantage of not having a crowd, you know, that, that pesky audience is uh, you can sort of utilize every square inch of, of the space, you know, so right. we, we're going to try to take advantage of that and, and set a few different scenes throughout the night. Yeah. Oh, it's going to be great. So tickets are still available through uh, Ticketmaster, Universal uh, Music, and as Jim Beam presents. Yeah, just so you wow. know, the capacity is unlimited. So it will <laughs> always be available in the whole world. That's right. You know I mean? See, everybody's in, and the, the ticket price at 16 bucks can't be beaten to see the truth. So yeah. uh, you can get to get to the tickets through uh, Ticketmaster, Danforth Music Hall, tomorrow yeah. night at 9 o'clock, right? Dude, there's no line at the bar when you're watching from your couch. Yeah. No, line at, no line at the bathroom, no line at the bar, no noisy uh, neighbors, you know, no bouncers. And your booze are, is cheaper at home, man. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You can free pour at home too. That's exactly. Oh, it's, we may never go to a concert again. We'll always just be. <laughs> this will just be the way it is moving forward. So you can get your tickets through Ticketmaster. It's at the Danforth Music Hall. Nine o'clock tomorrow night is uh, is when it gets going. Gather the family, gather your friends, crank it up on your home stereo systems, and uh, it'll be a great night with the truce. Colin, John Angus, thank you so much, guys. Thank you for having us, man. All the best. Cheers.